everybody, me and Dean back at you with another video, and today we are doing another episode of the infamous Cheap and Cheerful series. Uh, I went out today to, I was actually looking for a particular wine. Um, somebody, uh, my nephew-in-law, actually asked me to review a wine that he, I guess, has tasted before, and he wanted my thoughts on it. And the only place I could find it is at Everything Wine. So I happened to be in Abbotsford today where they're having Everything Wine. I went in there. They didn't have that wine. They do sell at Everything Wine, just not that particular location. So uh, I will keep find, looking for that and uh, I'll do that in my next Cheap and Triple video, perhaps. So these all came from Everything Wine. Um, they are all very cheap. We'll see about the cheerful part, won't we? Um, I'm going to start. I got a rosé, a white, and a red. Um, the white is a Vino Verde from Portugal. And the red is a. Let me try this. Valdeguet. Valdeguet. That is a grape, yes. I had never heard of this grape before. Uh, it apparently is grown mostly in the Languedoc. I had never even heard it there, and I, I've had a fair amount of wine from the Languedoc in France. This is from the Monterey County um, in California, J. Lore. No idea. Anyway, uh, the very helpful staff member there, who uh, they've got a, gu a guy in the, you know, the vintages room, their higher-end room, um, that knows a lot about wine, and uh, we got talking about my blog and my vlog, and he uh, I talked about the parameters for this, and, his, and he recommended a couple of these because they're really quite cheap. This one here, this is interesting. We're going to start with the rosé. 2020 rosé from the shadows, curious incident from British Columbia. Now, you're probably saying, what? I've never heard of it. Neither did I. Uh, it's, it's their wine. It's an everything wine exclusive. Um, who makes it? Uh, it, it? Mission Hill is involved somehow but he said it's not made by them but it is uh i don't know it's on there it's in their portfolio somehow with down the label uh it is definitely cheap we'll see about your but 14.99 so 15 10 with deposit what's that with taxes you know uh, i don't know just under 20 bucks anyway right so and it's 2020 rosé last year's he said the 2021s are coming in soon so they have more than a rosé they had a rosé they had uh, two whites, I think, and a rosé that are from this this from the shadows curious incident series that is made and only sold at Everything Wine. So for those of you that don't live where Everything Wine is, uh, sorry, <laughs> what can I do? But a whole bunch of my BC peeps will probably uh, be interested to find out if this is any good for fourteen ninety nine. Okay, well, uh, I wonder if it says what I didn't actually ask them what grape it's made of. I wonder if it says it's probably a blend. I doubt it's single. I don't think it mentions the grape. I'll look that up later. Uh, but for now, certainly, you can see it's a, a salmon color. Not a bad nose. Oh, something strange there, though. So, red berries, um, watermelon, cranberry. It's a very interesting smell. I don't think it's like wild blueberry. Something I don't really get in rosé very often. It's almost like a hay quality too. Hmm. It's a wild strawberry. That actually smells pretty good. Okay, so let's see if it, hopefully it tastes like it smells and probably got a good bargain for 15 bucks. It's not quite cold enough yet, but it's close. Um, all right. It's like some. Strawberry, watermelon candy, but not really, really intense. Like the sometimes you get water, those watermelon jo Jolly Rancher aroma and flavors. So it's kind of like that. It's a little more subtle, which is good for me because I really don't like watermelon, and I really don't like watermelon Jolly Rancher candy. Um, it's dry, but not bone dry.
bit of a lemon pith on the mid palate. Again, not really intense. Raspberry. Pomegranate. I mean, it's, it's okay for 15 bucks. Curious Incident Rosé, $14.99. I mean, it's perfectly quaffable. I'll have to look up when I post this video. Before I, before I post it, I'll look up, see if I can find some more details. Find out what grapes it is. It's not one of those Pinot Noir and Rosés, I don't think. Bright, fresh notes with a hint of watermelon, raspberry, and cotton candy. I much prefer cotton candy to watermelon, right? I don't get cotton candy, but like there definitely is some watermelon. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's... It's not bad. I wouldn't rush out and buy a case, but... Um, if you, want, if you happen to be around in everything wine and you want to try out uh, a rosé and you, you uh, like a nice budget rosé, 15 bucks before taxes, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, tell you not to buy this. It's, it's okay. Mm. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a blood orange on the finish as it really um, finishes. It finishes medium, medium plus. Um, and yeah, a little bit of like an intense blood orange, maybe a little bit of uh, like a pink grapefruit too. There. Okay, so yeah, it's uh, it's nothing wrong with that. It's, I mean, it's for the money, you know. Good QPR, quality to price ratio. In case you don't know what that is, um, not bad at all. I think uh, I think some people might enjoy that. Okay, let's move on to the white, shall we? All right, here we go with wine number two today. This is the white wine, obviously. 2020 Vinho Verde. The producer is Avaleda. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Vinho Verde, it is a it's not a grape, it's a region in uh, northern Portugal, uh, just south of the Spanish border, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it produces some uh, generally low alcohol, generally uh, moderate to good quality wines. And usually it's a region that other people will, would say you can get some good value out of. This one, um, there are several grapes that you can use, a lot of uh, native grapes. This one is actually Loreiro. 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 I guess is how you pronounce it. I'm not actually sure. I've never tried to pronounce that word before. And uh, Alvarino. Alvarino, yes, is the same as Alvarino. In Spain, it's Alvarino. In Portugal, it is Alvarino. But it's the same grape. And the characteristics are apparently quite similar as well. So this was, what did I say, 14 bucks? Uh, 16.99, normally it was on sale for 15.99, $1 discount there, so still in the $20 range after taxes. Uh, well, it actually smells quite a bit like Albarino. There's a lot of sea spray, right off the bat. It's the first time I get some salinity. Um, Red apple, yellow apple actually, a bruised yellow apple, gooseberry, I don't know anything about the characteristics of the, of the grape Loray Roll, it's a common one in Vinho Verde, but I don't really know what to expect. 11% uh, alcohol, so this is a good wine, it'll pair well with uh, another bottle. Also apparently these wines are really crisp and clean and will pair very well with um, seafood, shellfish, chicken, that kind of thing. Things you might expect to pair well with. Alright, let's dive right in. So yeah, it's interesting. Medium, viscosity. Uh, 
um, very acidic, medium plus to high acid. 11% alcohol, a little lower than I thought. It tastes like there's more alcohol than 11%. Very green, dry, lemon zest, still some gooseberry. Trying to coax out some more flavors. Really, it's really very acidic and very citrusy. Um, lemon zest is right, what really comes right up on the palate. grapefruit and then it gets kind of herbaceous on the mid palate and there's a bit of an odd aftertaste I'm not a huge fan of this I don't think at this point mm. it might just need food but really, a $15 white from Portugal, you should be able to just sip it on the patio and it should be perfectly quaffable. Yeah. Yeah, no. Don't think I can recommend this one. I don't. It's a little off-putting. It really is. Yeah. No. Not a fan. I'm not going to drink that. All right. Well, I'm going to grab a glass and we'll get out of the red. Might as well. Okay, so the red here. This is an interesting one. I'm not sure what to expect here. I bought this just really as a... Uh, I've never heard of this grape. Let's try it type of thing. Even the guy at Everything Wine seemed a little reticent to recommend it. He has tried it. and he didn't, That was interesting. But, um, but you know... Quite often, they're very passionate about wines they really like, and they don't want to say, no, that's garbage, don't buy this. But um, they, he wasn't, it wasn't a full throat of the endorsement, put it that way, of this particular wine. So this is J. Lore 2019 Valdegay. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, Valdegay. Valdegay is the grape from the Monterey County in California. I've never had Valdegay before. <laughs> I don't know anything about it other than what I understand that it is uh, grown in the Languedoc and used in blends there. I assume there's probably some single varietals uh, made out of there too, but uh, I have never ever had it. It's called Wildflower Valdegay. I, I don't know what the wildflower means other than I think it's just the name of the wine. Okay, I'll read what it says here. Valdegay is grown in cool, windy, Araro Seco in Monterey County, yet is reminiscent of the great cruise of Bur Beaujolais in France. Youthful, light-bodied red wine has a fresh, juicy complexion, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. So, he described it as a cross between Pinot Noir and Gamay, but more floral. It's definitely darker than Pinot Noir. It looks like a Gamay. I, I blind tasted it, I guess I probably said it was a Gamay just by looking at it. So, it's interesting. As you saw, I just opened this. I haven't been to Canada or anything. This is the definition of pop and pour. So it is floral. Like some violets and some red roses as well. Red cherry, uh, raspberry. Give me some pomegranate. Hmm. I put it in a peanut water glass because I had literally no idea what to drink it out of. Uh, my Valdigay glass uh, uh, section is very small. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, 
it's like it's a little bit like gamay, but uh, but uh, a little more a little more intense. I'm tasting blueberry. I'm tasting blackberry. I'm tasting red cherry. Just fruity, fruit, fruit, fruit. No, there's no evidence of uh, oak or secondary tertiary characteristics. There's no, no, what's that? There are some floral characteristics that come up in the mid palate, <laughs> but hmm, so. Okay, would I recommend that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's it's yeah. For the it was this was the expensive bottle, twenty one ninety eight, at Everything Wine. I want to see if it said it said serve slightly chilled on its own or paired with barbecue salmon or roast turkey. Well, it's not a coincidence. I'm having barbecue salmon for dinner tonight, so maybe that's gonna be the wine to go with dinner. Uh, interesting. Uh, okay, so. The rosé was perfectly quaffable for the price. The white, I'm not a fan of. I wouldn't recommend that. The red, hey, you want to try something you've probably never had before? And please, if any of you actually ever had this grape before, uh, please let me know in the comments where you've had it and what it's like and what you know about it. Um, there isn't even a lot of information on the internet about it. Um, but it is interesting. It is, I mean, it's, sometimes it's nice to try something new, even if it's not a home run. But I don't mind it. It's a little bit almost like a... Uh, uh, like a, a bit of a chalky minerality and a, and a bit of a tiny bit of maybe uh, like dark chocolate that kind of comes up at the very end. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's fine. We'll see what it's like after I decant it and wait a couple hours for dinner. Maybe it's going to get better. Probably will. Interesting. Valdigate. All right. It's spelled V A L D I G U I E with an accent agu. I think it's an accent agu. So I think it's Valdigate. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I even looked it up before I did this video, but I've forgotten. So interesting. Thirteen percent alcohol. Twelve percent alcohol. Eleven percent alcohol. Thirteen percent alcohol. None of them seem very hot. I'm intrigued by a grape I've never heard of before being made in Monterey County in cauliflower, cauliflower. I love the state of cauliflower. California. Um, where I understand they grow cauliflower, so that makes perfect sense. So anyway, uh, yeah, so I think I'm, I'm going to save this and I'm going to try it with my barbecue salmon tonight and see how that goes. Uh, see if it's as good a pair as they say. But it definitely is a lighter red, but not as light as Pinot Noir. Uh, Gamay-ish, I would say. All right, well, so I hope that I've given you uh, at least one. I know this is everything wine exclusive. I wouldn't buy this. Uh, this one, I don't know where you're going to find this. I, I, this I, all got, I got them all at everything wine, but I couldn't tell you whether this one's available anywhere else. I'm sure it is. It's Jay Lohr, which is obviously a, a well-known California brand, but I've never seen it anywhere else before. But hopefully you enjoyed the video anyway. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, if there's any of you out there that watch the videos but don't ever read my blog, well, first of all, shame on you. But more important, we had a, I had a fantastic night last night at a, a private event. Um, some friends invited us to a wine tasting at their home, um, and I just I just a couple hours ago I posted the blog about it, and we had some fantastic wine, including an '82 Bordeaux, yes, '82, 40 years old, and lots of other great stuff too. So I will put the link to that in the comments here, um, in case you want to go read that after this. It's, I, we had nine wines, uh, I think, you know, there's like 12 of us there, and a couple people didn't drink a lot, they were driving, obviously, which is good. Um, but uh, we went through, and I think we all had just a perfect amount of wine, perfect amount of wine with some really great stuff. Uh, so check that out, it'll be in the description here. So, until next time, thanks so much for watching, and drink great wine. See you soon.